Hi everyone, it's Laura Binding and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this necklace. Now in this necklace I've used a weave called Captured Bead. So the weave itself is actually holding these gemstones inside. There's no other kind of um, security in there other than the jump rings. So this is a fully connected piece, so it's um, continuous. I'm also going to show you how we can integrate it and change it very slightly by adding links into the actual sections as well to give it a bit more fluidity and movement. And then this really nice, super easy two and two chainmail link here, as well as how we actually finish the piece off by adding a toggle clasp. So you can see this is the whole piece, it's got lovely fluidity um, and the lovely tones of the gemstones inside is very subtle but it makes it very easy to wear. I'll also touch on how you can convert this into some earrings and even a bracelet. On this bracelet I've actually, I have actually done a section in the center and then use the Byzantine weave to finish the piece off so you can see it's a very very versatile weave and adds just that lovely delicate prettiness to your pieces the tools that you're going to need for this project are very simple I have two pairs of pliers here that are zero on I just particularly like these two these are the bent chain nose pliers but there are two different types of bent chain nose pliers so you have these ones which have a, a slightly um, different degree of angle here and these ones which are a lot more sort of upright I personally prefer these I just find them a little bit easier to use but these are also very very popular when using chain mail it's just your personal preference um, I also like to team these ones up with these short chisel nose pliers. Again, these are Zeron. Both of these brands are Zeron. But if you don't have those, just having two pairs of chain nose pliers, you know, non-branded, it doesn't matter. These will do the job as well as maybe some flat nose pliers. So it's very easy to, as long as you've got pliers that have a flat surface, and you'll be able to hold a jump ring and with it with the two jump rings you'll be able to open and close it properly and I'll talk about that in a moment materials that you're going to want for this project are going to be three different sized jump rings now I'm going to be using the 5 mil, the 4 mil, and the 3 mil in a diameter jump rings these are going to be great for add, actually catching your gemstone, but also just to add the additional details as well. Having the different sizes just means that you can graduate your design down visually as well. The gemstones that I'm going to be using for this project are going to be these 4mm plain smoky quartz gemstones. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They're going to go inside the chainmail perfectly. So as a guide as to the size that you're going to want for your actual catching sort of captured bead you're going to need a gemstone that is about two millimeters smaller than your actual jump ring um, as, a, as a sort of a minimum uh, a maximum sorry because you don't want your gemstone to actually go through the gem the jump ring you need it to be down right size with so maybe a little bit of trial and error but this size combination works perfectly I will be using the 5mm jump rings to catch the 4mm gemstone. For the demonstration I'm actually going to be using antique bronze coloured jump rings. This is a, just a different colourway to the design that I've used um, previously which was the gold coloured jump rings and I actually used fluorite gemstones in this one. And this is just going to be a little bit of a more um, sort of a, a darker toned design just to see how it works in lots of different colourways. And what I'm going to do is start off, I've got a little scrap piece of copper wire here, this is a 1mm and I want to actually take a 4mm jump ring and pop that on. This will become like my starting handle. 
just means that I'll be able to keep control of the jump rings until the weave starts to take place and get a little bit more solid. I'm then going to just twist these together so that they can't go anywhere. And my jump ring's on there. And we're going to go ahead and start this weave. The reason I went and put a 4mm jump ring onto here is because I'm going to finish the captured part off with a 2 in 2 chain mail and that is going to be using the 4mm size jump ring so by putting one 4mm on here already that's going to start um, the weave in place for the next section so what we're going to do now is taking um, the 5mm jump rings So what we're going to do now is taking the 5mm jump rings, um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding them to create this weave. What I'm going to say, you'll see here that I've already prepared some sections, so I'm going to explain what I've done very quickly. So we'll see that I have a 5mm jump ring just here. So I'm going to show you just very quickly how I actually go about opening and closing these jump rings, and also how to make sure that they're ready for the piece itself. So when you pick a jump ring up, you'll see that there's a saw line. You just have to have a little look, and you'll be able to see. I can see that it's just here. So I'm going to go ahead, take my second pair of pliers, and just place them in, and very gently, you can see how I'm twisting my hand to open that out. What I'm then going to go ahead and do is pick up two of the closed jump rings. Oops. Oh, I caught three there. Make sure it is only two. And then I'm going to place that down. And that's going to be one ready for when I start my weave. It's just going to make it all a little bit quicker once you start to actually build the weave up. I'm then going to go ahead and take one of my 3mm jump rings and just have that open and placed. So you'll see I've got sections here ready to go. The other tip I would say is when you have your closed jump rings, just have a quick look at them and just make sure that they are closed fully because sometimes you will get a jump ring and it may not be. So for example, this one, I don't know if you can see, but there's a very slight gap and it's not closed properly. So what I would do is if I was to pop that straight onto the chain mail, it could... Um, it could fall back off because of the gap also it's going to give a bit of a sharp edge and possibly catch when it's actually built into a design it's going to be a little bit more noticeable also if you were to say do a design where you were using them decoratively such as in this this necklace here you can see i've used these jump rings as decoration so they've just been simply placed on now if they were open like this one they would fall straight back off of the bead and thread because it would fall through that gap. So again, I'm going to just come in with my pliers, take a moment and just very gently, just moving my hand backwards and forwards, just to get that cut to meet. And now that gap has gone. So just take a moment before you add all of your closed jump rings onto your open ones to make sure that there are none like that. Again, if you've started your weave and you notice it, you can very quickly straighten it out as well. So picking up my sort of little wire handle, I've already got my jump ring on here as we know, so I'm going to take one of my sections that I've got open and loaded with two jump rings already and just pop that straight onto that 4mm jump ring and then come in with my pliers and just close that giving it a little wiggle just to make sure that is nice and closed and that's what you're going to have so effectively you're going to have a 4mm and then a 5mm and two 5mm attached so this is going to be done in double so I'm going to pick up another so I'm just going to switch hands. I personally prefer to have, I'm right handed, so I prefer to have the longer pliers in my right hand as I find that easier to sort of pick the jump, the jump rings up. Opening that out, picking up your section 
and what I'm going to do is where there's that single jump ring I'm going to place another one so taking my five mil I'm going to place it through the four mil and then I'm just going to catch the other two five mils that are oops start again through the four mil all the way around just catching those other two five mils taking your pliers and closing so when you place this down you'll see that we have two and two and if it's hopefully you'll be able to see that they're hanging nicely now I'm going to add my first gemstone so I'm going to take my section and I'm going to hold it in my hand and I'm going to try my hardest to show you this so I'm going to hold the section and let the top two drop now they're just laying flat they're not folding they're just laying flat I'm going to come in with my pliers and I'm going to lift the two that are underneath and just bring them forward but these to the side still stay flat they do not fold then I'm just going to just make a little sort of opening so you can see just to open that out take one of my gemstones and just place that straight in to those two jump rings now this is where having the pre-opened three mils really do come into key. So what we're going to do is just very gently bring up the two side jump rings and then take in one of these three mil jump rings, pop that straight through both of those and that should lock it into place. So come in and close this and then turn the piece down and you have your first captured gemstone next I'm going to take another one of my pre-made sections with my open 5mm jump ring and the two attached to it and place that onto my 3mm dropping that down and closing that I'm then going to take another jump ring and open this. Now you can again have a load of pre-opened 5mm jump rings as well. That will take that will save a bit of time. But opening that one out and feeding it again through that 3mm and then coming all the way down and just catching those other two 5mm and closing. So you can see we have this again. So what you're going to effectively want for every link you need two sets of two five mils. Okay, so two and two. So turn the piece around again. We're going to just hold this in our hand. Let those two top ones just drop nice and flat. Use your pliers if you want to, to just bring the other two to the front. And just open them out to catch that gemstone. Place that gemstone in, take one of your pre-opened three mils and just catch the two side ones. Now I'm also going to tell you something else that's going to be quite important but that doesn't come into effect until we start not having this three mil in the middle. So at the moment you can see we're looking at this. I'm just going to do one more. So again taking one of my pre-made sections popping that onto my free mill, closing it taking another three, uh, five mil sorry jump ring feed that through the free mill and catch those two five mils and close Turn the piece around, 
drop these to the side this is another reason I like these pliers because I feel like I can really control what I'm doing with them just making sure it's nice and open pop in your jump uh, your gemstone sorry and catch those two outer wires there we go 